Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, Zenith's Kit Aircraft Building Workshop and Fly-In Drawing Near. Vans Aircraft Admits to Serious Issues. Rotor X Situation Remains Difficult. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Zenith's Kit Aircraft Building Workshop and Fly-In Drawing Near Zenith Aircraft is returning to Central Florida on December 1st and 2nd for the purpose of hosting its hands-on kit aircraft building workshop to be held on the Sun and Fun Expo campus and followed immediately by an informal regional Zenith fly-in gathering. The workshop will get underway on the morning of Friday, December 1st inside the Bueller Aerospace Restoration and Training Center. Zenith Aircraft's hands-on workshops are structured primarily for first-time kit airplane builders. The events, which address the development of building skills, requisite tools, workspace, cost breakdown, etc., have grown popular with sport aviation enthusiasts aspiring to build their own kit airplanes. Workshop participants build their own Zenith aircraft rudder assemblies from standard Zenith kits. Owing in part to the high level of factory completion inherent to Zenith's new aircraft kits, participants are able generally to successfully complete the work in only one day. Over the course of building their respective rudder assemblies, workshop participants under the auspices of Zenith factory staff tackle an assortment of tasks, including learning to read and comprehend technical drawings and assembly manuals. Additionally, participants are familiarized with joinery techniques the likes of drilling and blind riveting. By workshop's end, they've assembled rudders ready for installation on Zenith kit airplanes and gained a foundation of confidence upon which to commence building their own kit aircraft. Coming up after the break, Deland Showcase tries again this weekend. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Deland Showcase tries again this weekend. The Deland Aero Showcase will be making another appearance this weekend. The event will take place on November 3rd and 4th, 2023 at the Lee Matusik Airport Management Center, located at the Deland Municipal Airport in Florida. A little over a dozen exhibitors appear to be on the roster this year, with many of them associated with the event organizer Aero Affinity Holding Corp. ANN will head down this weekend to see what shows up and try to fly a few new birds while on site. Community Aviation hosts new blog by Rich Stowell. Community Aviation recently began hosting a blog penned by award-winning master flight instructor Rich Stowell, 2014's National FAA Safety Team Rep of the Year and 2006's National Flight Instructor of the Year. Stowell's blog focuses on stick and rudder issues geared toward CFIs and low-time pilots. When asked about his target audience, Stowell replied, quote, First and foremost, our job as instructors is to teach others how to fly. Yet, in-flight loss of control remains the top fatal accident category by a long shot. To boot, pilots with less than 500 hours are more likely to have a stall spin accident than a genuine engine failure, end quote. EAA weighs in on Whitaker confirmation. The U.S. Senate has confirmed Michael Whitaker as the FAA's new permanent administrator. The EAA, via CEO and Chairman of the Board Jack Pelton, set forth, quote, We very much appreciate the Senate's swift action to confirm Michael Whitaker as FAA Administrator, as it brings long-term stability and leadership to the agency. With the Administrator's confirmation complete, Congress can now turn its attention to the urgent matters of FAA authorization and appropriations to provide further stability for the entire spectrum of aviation in our country, end quote. 
Easy Up inspection covers help pay for EAA youth programs. EAA Chapter 534 members and a number of local youths gathered in the chapter's hangar on Florida's Leesburg International Airport for the purpose of seeing to an unusual and ambitious entrepreneurial undertaking. The assembled folks were packaging parts for Easy Up inspection cover kits, constituents of an order for 300 new inspection covers placed by an aviation wholesaler to which the chapter provides the product. Designed to be used on fabric-covered experimental and LSAs, Easy Up covers occasion an elegant solution to the incongruities of riveted inspection covers in airplanes skinned with doped fabric. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Vans Aircraft admits to serious issues. Vans Aircraft is facing serious cash flow issues, resultant of a series of unfavorable events and circumstances, principal among which are 1. Pandemic-driven costs, the shutdowns and supply chain issues by which the COVID exigency was characterized drove up Vans' costs, doubled the company's inventory levels, slowed deliveries, and severely strained cash flow. Ironically, resurgent post-COVID markets dramatically increased Vans' orders, requiring the company to hire and train more staff. 2. Subcontractor Issues While attempting to ride out COVID's repercussions, Vans learned one of its overseas contractors had used an inferior primer, resulting in aluminum corrosion by which a great many quick-build kits were adversely affected. 3. Outsourced Parts Issues As Vans fell behind shipping orders, the company was compelled to subcontract the manufacturing of some aluminum parts, albeit at increased cost. Vans determined the only timely option was to have some parts laser-cut rather than CNC-punched, as is Vans' convention. Vans will take time through mid-November 2023 to evaluate means by which to most comprehensively and efficiently satisfy builder concerns regarding laser-cut parts. Also, the company will review the cost of its parts and kits. During the aforementioned period, shipments of Vans parts will be delayed, kit orders will not be processed, and refunds will not be issued. ANN has confirmed that our friend Michael Vai, who oversaw a similar process at Glass Air several years ago, has been named Interim CEO. And after these messages, Rotor X situation remains difficult. Flying is my entire life. It's all that I've ever known. I've relied on Hartzell propellers since about 1995. Hartzell means much more than a propeller. It's a relationship. When you hear the phrase, built on honor, they care about us as pilots, they care about our community, and they care about the product they build. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Rotor X situation remains difficult. The Rotor X situation remains questionable. After a late September Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing, the company's petition has been refused because company owner Don Shaw has failed to provide the proper records to the trustee. Bankruptcy judge Paul Sala dismissed the case due to, quote, the debtors having failed to file a list of creditors in the proper format as required by Local Bankruptcy Rule 1007-1, end quote. Rotor X may refile the petition at a later date, but it will be complicated by their inability to follow through the first time around. Where this leaves customers, several of whom are suing the company, remains to be seen. In the meantime, a group of employees who claim to have been unpaid for months have started a GoFundMe in order to mitigate their damages, and ANN is looking into an online Rotor X support group that admits having had prior knowledge of the problems at the company for a while, but failed to publicize the issue so that their members could recover what they might. But at the possible expense of those uninformed customers who paid for kits while unaware of what was occurring with the company. Further, we've learned that the same group has deleted our messages that attempt to inform them of the situation at Rotor X. More info to follow. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.